Welcome to ETH, news and headlines from a prophetic perspective. Here at End Time Headlines, our mission is to inform our listeners of the times and seasons in which we are in. In Luke 21, 28, we are told when you begin to see all these things come to pass, lift up your heads, your redemption is drawing near. And now, founder and pastor of End Time Headlines, Ricky Scapero. And I'm going to welcome everybody to the broadcast via by Facebook Live and you guys that are watching the rebroadcast of this by YouTube. Uh, welcome to the broadcast. Again, this is End Time Headlines. I'm Ricky Scaparro, the founder of End Time Headlines. And we're going to, I'm going to discuss a couple topics that I think is um, very interesting and intriguing um, that has caught a lot of attention on our main website at endtimeheadlines.org or endtimeheadlines.com. And they are uh, worthy of, of a discussion because uh, I believe they have uh, significance uh, is regarding a prophetic perspective. So without further ado, let's get into this thing. Um, let's go to the book of Daniel, guys. Daniel chapter 12, Daniel chapter 12, verse 4. If you have your Bible, please turn with me to Daniel chapter 4. Now I'm going to read this verse. Very familiar. Anybody and everybody that knows eschatology or end times or prophecy, they're going to know this verse. Um, so I'm going to read this from three different translations. We're going to start with the New King James. Then I'm going to read it with from the New Living Translation. Then I'm going to read it from the Amplified. We're really going to pull some stuff out of this. This is Daniel chapter 12, verse 4. And this, the Lord is speaking to, the, to Daniel here, Daniel the prophet, and he says, But you, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. For many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. Somebody say, and knowledge shall increase. All right, let me read this again. Same scripture from the New Living Translation. But you, O Daniel... Keep this prophecy a secret. Seal up the book until the time of the end when many will rush here and there and knowledge will increase. Again, that was Daniel 12, 4, the NLT. Now let me read it from the Amplified. But as for you, Daniel, conceal these words and seal up the scroll until the end of time. Now I want to point something out here. All three, and we're going to read the rest of this in just a second, but I want to stop right here for a second. All three of these translations all agree on one thing, that this prophecy that was told to Daniel to seal up would not be released until the time of the end or the end of time. Does everybody follow along with this? Okay. And then he says, again, this is Daniel 12, 4 amplified many will go back and forth and search anxiously through the scroll and knowledge of the purpose of god as revealed by his prophets will greatly increase so when we put these three translations of daniel 12 verse 4 together it paints a picture of something that we need to pull out today number one is that Daniel was told to seal up certain revelation. I call it end time revelation until a certain time frame. Now, all three translations agree that that time frame would be the time of the end or the end of time, or we could say the last days. I'll say, so everybody has to come into agreement with that. Um, then the next thing, and let me silence this, guys. You know how every 100 people will try to call when we do these things. This is how it is. Okay. Then the next thing I want to point out is Daniel said that one of the indicators that this prophecy, this, this revelation would be released upon the earth, one of the indicators that we would be in the end time or the time of the end or the last days when this would be released is that we would see many run to and fro. Now, New, New Living Translation says that you will see many rushing here. You'll see many rushing there. Uh, and then the Amplified says you'll see them go back and forth. 
Now, as I've studied this over 19 years of eschatology uh, or in times that I've studied this, I've studied this, this scripture, and many and most scholars will come to agreement on either th- uh, several different angles here. Number one, that this uh, the the many shall run to and fro is the busyness, the hustle and bustle uh, of, uh, of of the civilization that would be alive at the come or at the at the time that this would be released. That we'd be see, begin to see this prophetic information being released upon the earth it would be a time when there would be great such great. A busyness of the world and its population. Well, friends, we're there by no, uh, I want to say just from that angle alone, I have to agree with that. I mean, my goodness, we are already what? January, February, March, April. We're four months into the new, new year already. If you can believe that, we are already four months into 2019. It's like, where is the time going? Um, You know, I, my son, uh, celebrated his 11th birthday and i'm like are really it's been 11 years it's like it seems like time is just accelerating it's speeding up it's we're so busy we you know we can barely squeeze in any time to do anything anymore because from the time that our feet hit the floor to the time we go to bed our schedules are so compacted it's compressed we're busy we're so hustle and bustle okay now let me give you another angle i want to give you another angle of this Another tra- another interpretation of many shall run to and fro, or many shall rush here and there, is that that before or during, I should say, the time that this revelation is released upon the earth, there will be mass transit. Transportation will reach an unprecedented level. Now, what does that mean? Again, you got to go back to the time that this was written. They didn't have airplanes. They didn't have shuttles. They didn't have trains. They didn't have that means of transportation. But look at now we fast forward and we live in a time frame now. We're living in a time frame that where we have look at the transportation capabilities that we have now. We can we could take airliners and fly 600 miles in two hours, if we wanted to, if, if it's a straight flight or whatever, we can we can take a train, we can take shuttles, we can take all means, all kinds of transportation. Uh, we have such opportunities and such availability for transportation. So now the and here's another one. The amplified version brings out a different angle to this. It says that many will go back and forth and they will search anxiously anxiously for the understanding of what was spoken of or what was revealed to the prophet Daniel. Now, I'm going to propose something to you today. I believe that all three of these angles are coinciding together. Let me say that again. I believe all three angles of this of Daniel 12 4 are coinciding together number one we have the busyness the hustle and bustle of civilization number two we have the explosion of transportation the means of transportation and number three I believe there is a what's called what we call a prophetic generation I believe there is a generation out there there may not be a lot of them out there, but there's a remnant of what I call the sons of Issachar, and you can include the daughters here. The daughters are included too, so come on, ladies. But we're talking about the individuals, the sons and daughters, who have understanding of the times and seasons in which we're in. Okay, they're able to understand this. They're able to read the news and headlines and see prophetic angles and prophetic interpretations of these and prophetic perspectives of these. They can they can see across the horizon. They can discern the, the seasons in which we're in, and they know that we're in a time of trouble, that we're in a time of distress. We're in perilous times, what Paul told Timothy what we would be in. So, I believe all three of these are coinciding together. All right. So now let me give you. Now let's go on to the other, uh, the 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 latter part of Daniel twelve four. The King James and New King James says that knowledge shall increase. Knowledge shall increase. All right. Uh, New Living Translation said knowledge will increase. And then in Daniel twelve. The Amplified, it says this. 
It says, and the knowledge of the purpose of God as revealed by his prophets will greatly increase. Now, let me show you. I believe, again, there's these two angles of the knowledge shall and will increase upon the earth. I believe these two angles are coinciding. Let me, let me explain this, and then we're going to get into some of these news and headlines from a prophetic perspective. Number one, I believe knowledge as the, as the definition of knowledge is the increase of understanding, the understanding of things, okay? The understanding of how things are put together, how things are brought about. The It's knowledge. You have knowledge. You gain knowledge. You go to school. You get an education. Why? Because you get knowledge. You get understanding on how to, for whatever you major in if it's nursing my wife is in nursing she she has go, i've seen her go through many many years of education to gain the knowledge that she needs to be able to perform the task at hand to be able to be a good nurse and eventually to be a good practitioner in her field so she is ever always gaining knowledge okay but the the Daniel said, the book of Daniel says, the Lord tells us that in the end time, the latter days, the time of the end, we shall see an increase or what I call an explosion of knowledge. Think about it, guys. We're in 2019. Think about 40 years. Go back. Some of you guys can do this. I'm not, I don't have, uh, I can do that, but I, 40 years ago, I was only two years old, so I don't really understand, fully understand this. But even if I went back 30 years ago, think about the technological, te the technological advances that we had 30 years ago. Think about your computer. Think about your, uh, think about the telephone. Think about, um, Think about television. Think about all these things. And think about where we are from now to, thir you know, from 30 years ago to now. All right? Think about the knowledge, the explosion of knowledge, even in the medical field, in, uh, in all these areas. Okay? And then also, I want to go to this Daniel 12, 4, the Amplified Version says that the purpose of God as revealed by his prophets which shall greatly increase. I believe this is, again, this is another angle to this. Prophetically speaking, I believe we're seeing this as well. I believe that there is an, a greater understanding of the end times than ever before, even a previous generation, even 30 years ago, 40 years ago, the understanding of the times and the, the seasons of the end are at a greater understanding and a greater level of capacity than they were even 30 years ago. Now, having said that, Peter in Acts chapter 3 said something interesting. He says that Jesus, whom, and now this, you can find this in Acts 3. I wasn't going to go there, but I thought of this while we were doing this. Acts 3, 21. Acts 3, 21. So if you want to turn there, you can. But Peter says that heaven is going to restrain or hold back the return of Jesus until the time of restoration of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. Okay? So again, this is all we're talking about the prophet Amos, the prophet Hosea, the prophet Isaiah, the prophet Zechariah the prophet Jeremiah, all these prophets which foretold the uh, everything from the coming of the Lord, the revealing of the Messiah, the birth of the Messiah, the second coming, uh, the rise of the... All these things that the prophets foretold, they, the, the Peter, by revelation of the Holy Spirit, said that heaven is going to restrain Jesus from returning until the fulfillment of all things that were spoken of by the mouths of the prophets. Okay? Now, and this is absolutely concerning the nation of Israel as well, because remember, Israel is the fig tree. Uh, and when it's when it becomes ripe and when it begins to blossom, when summer, you'll know that summer is even near, it's even at the door. Okay, thus, so you, so a generation, the generation that sees all these things begin to come to pass, 
is the generation that will be alive at the coming of the Lord. Remember, even in, in when, when you want to talk about the rapture in 1 Thessalonians, I believe it's 1 Thessalonians 4, it talks about 4, uh, 16 and 17, it talks about we who are alive and remain shall be caught up. So there will be a generation alive that will be breathing, that will be living, that will be on the earth, that will be present there at the coming or at the revealing of the Son of Man when the, the trumpet sounds. So there will be a generation that will be alive at the catching away or the gathering together of the saints. Now, let me go back. Let me give you some of these headlines, okay? So keep this in mind. The ex I'm going to talk about the explosion of knowledge. Now, some of these headlines are downright frightening, to be honest with you. Here's, I'm going to give you just a couple of these guys because I, I don't want to take a lot of your time today, okay? Researchers at, at UC Berkeley and Lawrence Livermore Lab Laboratory have created a new kind of 3D printer that could potentially manufacture living human organs. Did you hear that? Now, what are we talking about? The explosion of knowledge. Normal 3D printers work by building up thin layers of melted plastic to create solid objects, but it's hard to get uh, to get intricate designs to hold their form. So design engineers at California and Lawrence Livermore Laboratory got the idea of making 3D objects the same way a CT scan creates 3D images by hitting a patient with x-rays from many different directions. So again, listen, this is what they're saying. We could potentially begin to see the manufacturing of living human organs. Now, this is a huge breakthrough as far as health goes, as far as the medical field. All right? Um, and I didn't put this in when I didn't I, I didn't put this in my notes, but I thought about this. But now they're saying that they uh, they're, they're they're coming out with vaccines now. Look, I don't want to get into the whole conspiracy about vaccinations and a whole debate about this, but they're trying to create vaccinations for everything from Alzheimer's to certain diseases and everything else. So again, what am I talking about? I'm talking about this explosion of knowledge. But then we get into something like this. Let's talk about these new two, these two other headlines that are downright frightening. Listen to this one. Quote, and you guys, you can find all these at endtimeheadlines.org, endtimeheadlines.com. Tech, uh, technology expert warns that humans could one day download their souls onto microchips so they can, quote, live forever. Let me read that again. Technology experts warn that human beings could one day download their souls onto microchips so that they, that they can, quote, live forever. Uh, the, the founder of Digital Anthropologist and Expert of, for Future of Work has warned of a future in which British workers have chips inserted under their skin. Come on, Revelation 13. Mark of the Beast. The process has already been trialed. Did you hear me? The process has already been trialed with company Biotech fitting 150 implants in the United Kingdom. And Sweden-based firm Biohacks told the Sunday Telegraph that it is in discussions with several British companies about microchipping. So, guys... This is not something they're, they're, that they're sitting around talking about in discussion or dreaming about. This is something, guys, that they're already implementing. All right? Speaking, let me read on here. Um, they, they, they told Sunday Telegraph, now this is, a, uh, uh, this is an affiliate out of, out of Britain or the United Kingdom, okay? The, um, they are in discussions with several British companies about microchipping, quote, but as humans and machines become more in sync, it could open all sorts of possibilities. Okay, here we go. Including being able to, quote, live forever. Now, I want to stop right there. That's not going to happen because even the Word of God says it's appointed unto men once to die and then 
the judgment. Somebody say, one day you're going to die. Okay? If, if you're not blessed to be here when the trumpet sounds and the eastern sky splits, then guess what? You're going to go. You're going to die. You're going to give up the breath. You're going to go. You're, you're going to go on. This, this physical flesh, this physical body will die. It will go back to the dust of the ground in which it came. And your soul and spirit will either go to the Lord or it will go down to a place called hell if you don't have a relationship with God. All right. So let me go on here. But nevertheless, it says, speaking to the Daily Star online, Mr. Skellett in, uh, explained, quote, there's a lot to talk at the moment. There's a lot of talk at the moment about microchipping employees, and there are some companies that are actually doing that. Quote, I can see benefits from it, but also opens up a whole roster of other things like being reborn. Oh, okay. You know what else it can open up as a roster, sir? Let me talk about other things. You want to talk about opening the Pandora's box? Microchipping and implanting things in your hand. Oh, yeah, it's going to open the door for some things, all right? How about opening the door to Revelation 13 where there's going to be a system that's going to be put in place by the false prophet and by the Antichrist in which they will control you by controlling what you buy, sell, or trade, and they will do that by consequently putting something in your hand or your forehead and you will not be able to buy, sell, or trade if you do not participate in this system or partake of it or volunteer to be uh, a part of its system. Whew. Is this not frightening, guys? I mean, does anybody else read this stuff and, and be like, wow. Now look, there's a whole generation that's ignorant of Bible prophecy. This is why people like me cannot stop preaching this because there's a whole generation that is now alive and well and many of them are in your church every Wednesday and every Sunday or twice a week or whatever. You see them in your gatherings, your home groups, your church, your churches and everything else and they have no clue about what we're talking about because A, they're, they're ignorant to it and, and that's not a... I'm not trying to be derogatory towards him. The word ignorant actually just means lack of knowledge or understanding. It's, it's kind of ironic because we're talking about the explosion of knowledge, but the Word of God says in the last days that men will become ever learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. So they're ever learning. They're learning from universities. They're learning from, from professors. They're learning from all these things. But they're ever learning, but they're, they're never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Come on, somebody. So there has to be, there has to be a remnant of voices alive and well in this generation that are sounding the alarm, saying, look, guys, this is the Pandora's box to this. This is paving the way for this. This is the prelude to this. This is the precursor to this. This is the forerunning technology that's paving the way for the very things that your mother, come on, our mothers and fathers, and their mothers and fathers, our grandfathers and grandmothers, come on, and our great-grandmothers and grandfathers have been warning about from generation to generation. And we are actually a generation that's alive and well today and are seeing these things come into pass unlike any other generation ever on the face of the earth. Nevertheless, he goes on and says, quote, I can see benefits from this, but also oh, it opens up a whole roster of other things like being reborn. Well, listen, you don't need to be reborn from a microchip. You need to be reborn, come on, from the living Word of God. Jesus said you must be born again. Be born of the Word. Be born of the Spirit. Come on, somebody. Be born again. If any man is in Christ, he's a new creation. For old, the old has passed away. And behold, all 
things have become new. But see, it's just like the devil. He wants to tell you, hey, you can get reborn through technology. You can get reborn through implants. You can get reborn through microchips. I got another headline, guys. Don't go anywhere because it's getting good here. Listen to this. The microchips from biotech are similar to those for pets and are implanted in the flesh between the thumb and the forefinger. And again, right now as we speak, these implants are for the purpose of convenience. Let me say that again. These implants right now are for the purpose of convenience. Because after all, we got a whole generation that's all about convenience. The less, less work, more pay. Come on, the less I can get away with, the less I can do, the less I have to be active, the less I have to be proactive, give me all the money I can and let me let work the, as least as I can possibly be. Let me come into my job and let me get all the way to the top, not work my way up like other generations did and start at the bottom and work their way up, but I feel entitled. I want to go and I want to start at the very top. After all, society owes me. Somebody owes me something. So convenience, in the name of convenience, we're implanting chips into the flesh of human beings so that they don't have to, God forbid, they actually have to unlock something with their hands or turn a knob or open a door. So through convenience, they can just put their hands into a slot and it can scan it and it'll unlock a door. It'll um It'll get them entries into this. It can pay for, listen to me, it can pay for things. It'll pay for your groceries. You don't have to have cash. You don't have to have a credit card. You don't have to have any of that thing. You just take your hand and you wave your hand over a, a barcode or over a scanner and all your information is right there. You don't need, we don't need to see your insurance, sir. All you got to do, let's just see your hand. Let me see your hand. Let's scan it. It's got your medical information. Oh, I see that you're diabetic. Oh, I see that you have a prescription of this and a prescription of that. I see that your doctor is Dr. So-and-so, and you go to this uh, facility over here. I see that you're, I see your history. We don't have to ask you that if there's certain diseases or ailments that, that run in your family because all that information is in that little bitty microchip the size of a grain of rice that you put it in your, that you placed in your hand and that, sir, contains all the information that you need. You don't need a wallet. You don't need a purse, ladies and gentlemen. You don't need any of that stuff. All you got to do is put something in your hand. And I'm going to tell you, according to Revelation 13, it's going to be in your forehead as well. Again, I don't want to open this door up to speculation of what exactly the mark of the beast is because I'm not saying that this is the mark of the beast, okay? So don't go out there and say, well, well, Brother Ricky said this is the mark of the beast. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is it's I absolutely 100% believe that it's a forerunning technology. And if anything, it is preparing a generation to receive this. It's conditioning a generation to accept it and to embrace it. Now listen, any of you guys who have followed our ministry for any amount of years, you'll know that I have said for years that I believe personally that the mark of the beast will be, will be accepted on a mass scale, widely accepted and embraced by a generation that would be alive and well, and it would be so much more embraced than it would be enforced. I, I mean, if you guys remember me saying that, let me know, because you you know I've been saying that for years, if anybody's in following this ministry. Well, recently I was watching the Jim Baker show, and uh, Pastor Mark Biltz came out. Now, if you don't know who that is, when the, the, the when the titrads or the four blood moons all begin to be come out and surface, he was one of the first ones that came out with this. In fact, I believe he was the first one that that had the revelation of the of the four blood moons and saw this uh, this uh, this astronomical uh, uh, alignment of this what's called the titrad of these four blood moons, and he wrote books on it. And then all these other authors like John Hagee and different ones came along, and they just kind of dovetailed off of that, kind of took that information and they added to it or whatever, just more information. But anyway, he is the pastor. But he was on 
uh, I watched him on the Jim Baker show recently, and he, he's wrote a new book. Um, I do not personally have the book, but he talks about the very thing that I'm talking about today. He talks about, and he, and I, and he agrees with what I said, or I agree with what he said, okay, that when the time comes and the generation is alive, when this mark of the beast system is being implemented, it will be greatly embraced and accepted by a generation that would be alive at the time that that would be implemented because, again, listen, guys, we are being preconditioned to this. We've already, you pick up your phone, it's got a it's got a facial recognition. You got the fingerprint scan. You got voice recognition. All these things. And now again, these companies over in Britain and the UK, and uh, and uh, what was it in Sweden in different locations, they are already implanting chips into their employees. That's preconditioning them to accept this type of system when it arrives. Okay, now listen to this next headline. How much time do I got here? All right, 31 minutes. Give me 15 more minutes and we'll call today. Google brain implants. Listen to this. Google brain implants. By the way, that would be here in your forehead. Just, just a thought, guys. I'm not saying it is, just a thought. Google brain implants could mean the end of school as anyone will be able to learn anything instantly. Listen to this, quote, Google brain implants could mean the end of school and anyone can learn anything instantly, says an artificial intelligence expert. Uh, the founder and CEO of, of foundtech.ai says that technology could improve our lives and completely change how we learn. Now, what are we talking about? What's our foundational text today? Knowledge, learning, understanding. Remember, Daniel said, Knowledge shall increase. Keep that in mind. In an interview with the Daily Star, he explained that he has been working on a revolutionary AI to, quote, personalize education to enable anyone can learn almost anything using AI. Quote, he believes that within the next two decades, 20 years, our heads will be boosted with special <clears throat> Ready for this? Implants so that, quote, you won't need to memorize anything. Now, this sounds good. Now, look, we posted this on End Time Headlines, and sure enough, under the face on our Facebook page, under the comments, there was people saying, this is great news. I'll be lined up. I'll be one of the first ones to 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 get this so that I can have a memory like that and I can have that knowledge. Now, hello, are you listening to me? That confirms what I just said. People will line up for miles. Listen, if you think people lined up to get the new iPhone, it's not so much now because they're they're tanking, but when 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 back when Steve Jobs was there, remember when the new iPhones came out? These people would be sleeping out in tents. They'd be sleeping on the sidewalks. They would spend days. Come on. What about all my Black Friday shoppers? What about the radicals of that? They would sleep days and be lined up in the streets so that they can get a sale on a video game console or they can get a new flat screen television. Now, look, if they're going to line up in the streets in the, in the rain, sleet, and snow, to get a, a piece of technology like that. What are they going to do when they're giving out implants that are virtually painless that you can become some kind of a super cyborg where you can re you have you, you have the entire encyclopedia in your head you can come up with any words use any phrases use any syllables use any definitions you can memorize the whole bible in your head without ever having to learn it without ever reading it or any of these things think about this guys Whew. let me read on if you don't think they're going to line up for that you got another thing coming let me read this he went on to tell that the day he went on to tell Daily Star that people won't have to bother typing any questions. You won't have to Google anything. You won't have to ask Siri anymore. As any queries will be answered immediately from an AI implant in your head. 
which will result in the end of parent fashion. It'll end education in schools as we know it. The expert who has racked up more than 20 years of working with startup ads, quote, Google will be in your head. And that's not far-fetched. Quote, it'll be like having a really smart assistant that will be almost, that will almost think like you. Now, guys, is that not the most frightening thing you have ever heard of in your life? Now, when I read this, I thought this was very interesting. Now, look, I'm not going to be able to finish the second part. I had a whole second part to this. But it's okay. We'll do it next week. So I won't forget we'll, we'll do this because I know you guys enjoy these, these segments. So we'll do that. I'll, I'll put my notes in so I won't forget this. I'm going to do a... a a whole other segment, a part two to this, um, and we're going to talk about mass deception, okay, and how we could see that in the future and, and how this could be tied in with aliens and unidentified flying objects and holograms and different things like that. So next, next week, probably Monday or sometimes next week, we'll get to that. But let me finish this. Let me finish this segment right now. I've got another 10 minutes. Let me finish this. When you go to Revelation, what's frightening about this is not only just the aspect of the mark of the beast system, okay, with the imp with the on the hand or the forehand or the forehead, okay, but let me talk about the mark of the or the uh, the image of the beast. Um, it says in Revelation thirteen twelve. Or let me go to eleven. I saw another beast coming up out of the earth and he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. That's the false prophet. And he exercises all the authority of the first beast, that's the Antichrist, in his presence and causes, listen to this, the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Now here it is, verse 13. He performs great signs. And now we're going to tie that in with our next segment next week too. So we'll go back to this. But he performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down from heaven upon the earth and the sight of men. And he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs. So the signs that will come from the false prophet will deceive those who are on, on the earth. So again, we're going to dig deeper into that next week on the next segment. So, and let me read on, which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth. Now, here it is. Listen to this. To make an image. And the word image here in the Greek is ikonai, or where we get icon. Um, I, if you've ever been like me, I like history, and I've watched a lot of historical documents and different things, or documentaries. Sorry, not documents. Documentaries. Uh, documentaries my goodness i'll get it right i got like four words tied up in one different documentaries all these all these leaders that rose up whether it be hitler whether it be stalin whether it be uh mao whether it be all these they always had statues of themselves saddam hussein they had these statues or these icons that was erected of them that was set in place and so that people would worship them. They would acknowledge them. They would idolize these individuals. This is nothing new. So when we go over here in the book of Revelation, it says that the false prophet will command those on the earth to create or make an image. They will make this image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and live. Now, here's the scary part. Listen to the details about this image. Whatever this image looks like, we know that it's going to be in reference to the Antichrist. Number Verse 15, he was granted power to give breath, that's life, to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not, as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. Okay, so when and this is what Mark Biltz talked about too on his segment on the Jim Baker show. Um, there's going to be a generation alive, guys, to say that artificial intelligence could not play a role in this is just being naive, guys. 
because again, we've they've already created robots. What is it, Sophie? I believe that can talk. She can have conversations with you. She can have intellectual conversations with you. She can answer questions, and she she even in some essence has a mind of her own. And there's some scary videos out there of this. So what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say, first of all, we're talking about news and headlines today from a prophetic perspective. I've showed you some headlines recently. And let me go back up here to our text, our foundational scripture. Daniel chapter 12, verse 4. The Lord tells Daniel, Daniel, you're to seal up the words of this prophecy until a certain time frame. And when this time frame has arrived, there will be indicators that it has arrived. There will be mass transit. People will be able to run from here to there through air. And, and we're there, guys. Again, air travel, land, air, land, sea, highways, Byways, roadways, railways, airways, every way possible, transportation has exploded. Number two, he said that knowledge will explode. There will be an explosion of knowledge. It will increase greatly in the time of the end. And when that time comes, here's what's interesting. Daniel was told to shut up the book or to seal up the book. But John the Revelator was told to open the book or to open the seal. See, if you go to, even in the book of Revelation chapter 1, it says that the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants things which must shortly take place. So in other words, one prophet was told to shut, shut up and seal the book, and then John the Revelator was told that when the, when the fullness of time had come, when the climax of time, when all these things came to pass and the time had come, then the book would be opened. And when it would begin to open, you would begin to see the very things that Daniel has prophesied, foretold, and was showed in times past, but now has been has begun to open in times present. Guys, I believe we're here. Here, I believe it is present. I believe it is now. I believe that the seals are the 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 seal. This book is being opened, and these things are shortly going to. They're already coming to pass, but they're going to begin to increase because the birth pangs of the Messiah are when it talks about the time, the time of the end or the increase of wars and famines and earthquakes and pestilences and all these things the, the Lord said that these will be likened unto birth pangs that they will increase you see all these um, all these descriptions of these things are all coming to pass it's like we're coming to a, a complete climax guys of prophetic uh, just a prophetic climax. So I wanted to bring this out today. Listen, tag some folks, share this with people, invite them into this broadcast. Anyone and everyone who loves the study of end times, eschatology, the end of uh, the last days, please tag them in this. Uh, share this link with them. If you're watching by YouTube, share the URL with it. We're going to put this up on our, on our, uh, you'll, you'll see this on our, on our, uh, YouTube channel at Remnant Revival Ministries, but it'll also be on our remnantrevival.org um, uh, website as well. Our remnantrevival.org website as well. Again, uh, you can find all this at endtimeheadlines.org, endtimeheadlines.com, remnantrevival.org. All these are all going to be found by them. Again, so if you're watching by Facebook Live, we appreciate you coming on here and taking the, the time out of your schedule to, uh, to, to listen to this message. I believe many were blessed and informed by this message. Again, if you um, if you like to follow us, you can go under the Facebook Live under End Time Headlines. Click on there where it says uh, endtimeheadlines.org. Subscribe to our emailing list, and you can uh, get one digest every single day in your inbox that will give you news and headlines from a prophetic perspective. All 
all these headlines we just discussed today, you can read every one of those from our main website right there at endtimeheadlines.org, endtimeheadlines.com. Um, if again, as always, guys, we want to encourage you if you like to, if you've been blessed by this message, you've been blessed by this ministry, you're informed, you're equipped, you're edified. If you'd like to support this ministry with a gift of any amount, you can do so by clicking under support ETH. Uh, you can click on that link right there uh, there on Facebook Live, and it'll take you to a page where you can give electronically or you can give by check or money order. The address and how to do that and all that information is going to be provided there. Again, um, or Remnant Revival Ministries. Again, I've always I, let me explain this to some new folks or some folks that may not understand this and they get a little confused. Guys, End Time Headlines, Remnant Revival Ministries, they are there are two branches of the same tree. That are the like today is a prophetic message, so we're we're under the umbrella of end time headlines. This is our news and headlines and information from a prophetic perspective. But all of our our ministry arm, as far as equipping, edifying, encouraging messages, they come from Remnant Revival. Again, they're they're two branches of the same tree. So if you've been blessed by either or, or both of these ministries and you'd like to sow a one-time seed or gift or partner with us again we always want to encourage you to do that if you're watching by youtube um all that information is going to be there on the screen you can see that by visiting our main websites uh and that you can go and it'll show you how to do that as well so again we love you guys we appreciate your prayers and your support of this ministry um we will be back on here lord willing on monday Next week, guys, we got some encouraging messages. We've got some equipping messages, and we've got some informing messages like this. We're going to do our second part to we're going to do another uh, news and headlines from a prophetic perspective, and we're going to bring a different angle of deception, and we're going to leave off where we left off and give you a whole different angle. So I'm excited about this and looking forward to that as well. So God bless you guys. We'll see you next week.